All right, well, timing belt is completely assembled now. Uh, upper mounts in, lower mounts in. We got the power steering and it's bolted back on. We did just drop the transmission. Kind of had everything unbolted already. Uh, so I figured I will take the moment of time. Uh, this is how I do it. I have the car supported. You can support it on jack stands, whatever you got. I do that, then I use a chain and I drop this down. Um, with all the mounts and stuff connected, this does stay over here pretty good. I just have this strap on here just for safety's sake. I do have a jack and a jack stand under there also because I had so much stuff to apart. So this is out. I'm busy inspecting that. But with that being said, let's unbox this clutch real quick. Installation instructions. Installation instructions. Here is the clutch disc. All right, they're labeled transmission side and flywheel side. You can tell if it's unused, even if it's unpacked, because you'll still see that on the clutch disc material. <clears throat> this is what we need here first. Here is your clutch disc. There's the part number for that separately, like I said. You know. All right. Part numbers. All right. Pressure plate and flywheel surfaces are oiled to prevent rust. So you're going to want to use like brake cleaner, window cleaner, just something to clean the surfaces off once you unpack these. All right, a piece of foam in here, pull that out. This will give us to the bottom. Here is a uh, trail bearing. There's the part number and stuff for that. Here is the part number for the pressure plate. They give you the alignment tool um, and the bolts hold the pressure plate on. So basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get everything cleaned up. I'm going to use a little bit of silicone. I'm going to put this in. It's almost like a pilot bearing, but it's just a centering tool. You want to put that in first. You could actually put it in after you put the flywheel on itself. Then we'll get this in place. We'll get these other two opened up. This lines up one way onto that. You'll use your centering tool through here into that and center it up because it goes into this piece. Bolt everything together in a star pattern. And we'll install this onto this. Um, I'll put grease inside here. I will put grease on the back side of this before I snap the clip back in that holds the fork on. And that will go into the transmission. Here is the old flywheel, the plate that goes with it. Um, I'm sure this is OEM. You can see the throwout bearing here has wear here. Some of them will actually get wear, worn here too on the back. I mean, the clips are pretty good on that, which is actually kind of amazing. You can see the area here, right there, that's worn down in comparison to a new fork. You can see the difference. So this fork is an OEM fork. It's pretty shot. I think, I don't know why I'm saying 120. I'll probably have to check the mileage on this. I'll let you know one of these videos. But uh, we're gonna get that situated um get everything taken care of like i said i'm gonna leave it with them a couple parts um i did already seal the speedometer sensor on this because it was leaking at one time uh both of the seals did look good nothing was leaking there so we're just going to take care of that we're going to get everything put back up in this thing and uh this is going to be a pretty quick uh, clutch install so here we go hey that gleaming yellow wonder wonderful newness down there uh, so we got the uh, AC T clutch is completely installed. Everything's Loctited, torqued down to where it needs to be. Um, we're getting ready to install the transmission. That wonderful noise you hear is, uh, you know, a little shop at all AC over there. So I have this in here. I do put a little bit of lube in the middle and I lube that up also. Um, I used some special stuff. I'm sure I showed somebody at one time. Oh, here we go. Right here. This Bell Ray assembly lube. Um, it's good for everything. Turbocharger fittings, tie rod ends, universal joints. Seems to work pretty good. It holds up pretty good. Um, I've used this a bunch of times, so it's just what I have, so that's what I use. Uh, really easy. Um, new fork, so new clips. It holds right in. So we're just gonna slide that on, snap it in. And uh, then we're gonna lift this transmission up. Hopefully it goes right in. These things always take time. They uh, 
they really need uh, some special persuasion when they go back in sometimes because I think it's the worst part of the job um, you know here lately a couple of them just line right up and go right in so we're gonna get this fork use this jack get this thing lifted up so we don't have to really do anything hopefully everything just goes right together man you know we might just get uh, super super lucky here double check all these too before I go putting them up check these I'll, I'll pre-lube them with a little bit of grease and um, hopefully they don't leak and uh, man we're we're almost down to a uh, little turbo time over there still look at all this mess yeah got to get some of this stuff put back together so we can get some stuff off the floor but it's one thing at a time this goes in then we can get our transmission mount installed I can prep that bracket I can get a little bit more stuff cleaned up over here on this side um, I did clean it a little bit uh, wipe some things down we'll get the trans in get the bracket in then we're down to uh, you know we can work on getting the rest of this here together in the front the intake can go on um, I still got to remove the stock turbo lines off the back of this and then we can start working on getting our turbo actually installed the manifold etc 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 and that right there this is the whole reason why we're doing this job all right we are just slightly farther than what we were <laughs> okay um so anyway uh another day but uh we successfully got the transmission is reinstalled um everything's back in the new clutch is installed i got the uh cleaned up some stuff around here got the intake reinstalled a whole lot cleaner down across there um we have our new transmission mount is installed like every time i put one of these together clean my bolts and he sees everything so all that stuff is uh taken care of we still do have a little bit of oil uh, on the bottom that's because the drain plugs loose not only that today we are going to start removing everything and getting prepped for our turbo install so i'm going to be getting that stuff out and um yeah, I'll show you what we got going on. Into the dark abyss. All right, well, we uh, pulled off the other lines. I got everything cleaned up down here. And uh, I got the oil line in. And um, they come with five studs. So one, two three here and then there's two on the bottom that'll go up underneath if you've ever looked at one of these you'll see where they're at and uh, normally they come with uh, other bolts but uh, I guess they wanted me to reuse the stock one so we got the stock ones I always put some high temp silicone um, look, 650 degrees Fahrenheit so it's not burning off uh, the turbo housing on the exhaust side usually gets to about 350 at a idle so it probably gets a little bit more than that so it's probably borderline depending on if you're into the housing but we'll have the lock teeth there um, we were missing the little fitting that's supposed to come off of this it was missing out of the it's missing in our kit because it took us two or three tries to get a turbo because stuff kept getting damaged so this is supposed to go in there you see it's flared this is just a fitting that I had. Um, it should look like this right here, but we don't have one. So we gotta wait for that. That'll actually go like right here, down in here where my hand is. It's right in there, yep, right down there where I had to put the temperature sensor in that last car. So right now I'm busy getting the uh, that tightened up. We are going to install a missing um alternator heat shield has to go on here this right down here that was damaged from the exhaust so we're going to replace this piece of hose for the evap system make sure that's working um here's their oil feed line so that's hooked up down at the bottom run up so that'll come up around like this and hook into the turbo right like that which is going to be nice so i'm going to finish torquing down the manifold uh that's so nicely coated black and get the heat shield on along with getting ready to set this turbo down in here 
All right, here we go. Check this out. All right, we got the uh, turbos down in here, the manifolds on. Um, this is how the coolant line runs out around. Uh, looks like it's bent a little bit. Not quite right, so I'll have to straighten that out. Uh, not too worried about getting that tightened up just as of yet. Uh, we have the, uh, I said the manifold's on, the turbo's bolted down, the O2 pipe is on, um, the O2 sensor's in, everything is connected where it needs to be connected there. Just got to bend over a couple more tabs yet, and the turbo is pretty much on. Um, I still need the lower fitting for that line like I was showing you here. And then here's our hose, so we'll get that trimmed when the time comes. Um, <clears throat> right now, like I said, I'm just trying to get everything fit up and together. Tomorrow we'll be tearing this apart. We'll be putting a valve cover gasket on, so we're getting all that cleaned up. Resealing all this. We're probably going to pull our plugs at the same time. Get those regapped. Um, right now we're looking into possibly a different fuel rail, uh, fuel injectors, and maybe some stuff for the fuel system. A little bit different than what we have as far as upgrades uh, so we have that to look forward to we got to get our serpentine serpentine belts or accessory belts need to be installed uh, we can get that taken care of to do, do yeah so maybe tomorrow we'll be at the point where we can might be able to fire this thing up oil wise we're gonna have flow and lubrication so we'll be good there uh, as far as that is concerned we can take care of that. We should be able to fire this thing up without any coolant running through that or the engine for a short period of time to be able to move this, which will be kind of nice. But we do still have a lot that needs to be done to this. So unsure of where I am as far as videos and where I'm gonna cut this off. This might be an ending or it might be a beginning. So we're gonna see how editing comes out. And uh, like I said, I just wanted to throw in another update I did really want to kind of try to uh, get this stuff done, but I had someone here to help because when you're laying over this, um, it does help because some of this stuff is a little heavy, including like the turbo housing and the manifold. You know, if you got somebody in there, you can reach around, reach up from the bottom. Third hand from a different direction does help. Um, so we'll be installing this here tomorrow along with our wastegate, get that stuff taken care of. Uh, I'm going to wait to install the heat shield till after this thing runs through and i know i don't have no leaks or anything also so all right till i get back to this thing okay so right now we have our plugs are gapped at 28 um we have a lot of everything is put together like i said i'm just going over everything today um and we're actually getting ready to install our wastegate so i got this thing unboxed um Beans that this is a stock motor and you're going to want to start out with your tune. Um, you kind of want to start out at like 8 PSI. Um, these come like this. It's easier to take these apart out of the car. So there is multiple springs <clears throat> that come with this unit. And also some adapter plates if you need to. Now with what's in here i'm assuming if i'm reading this right we have a green which is nine and we have a red which is six so we're going to add those two together that's 15 psi of spring pressure <sighs> a little bit of paint on there from that all right so they give you other springs with it okay so your blue where's it at do to do to do blue is going to be 18 all right yellow is going to be three and that's going to be 1.5 so i'm sure you could mix these together and have any variation of boost pressure so let's say you wanted uh 18 so maybe you put the blue one and the red one which would give you 18 and 6 so that gives you like 25 psi wastegate pressure but for this one um, when you're when you're doing this you kind of want to stay between I would say six and nine Which is basically like eight psi when you're doing your initial first pulls when you're doing your tuning so <clears throat> I'm just going to put the green spring in and Go with it there. We'll have all these other ones if we need to change something down the road or Anything like that we can 
Uh, they're real easy to change. Just stick it in. Uh, I like to try to make sure this is going the same way again. Um, this does take quite a bit of pressure. So that's why I say it's easier to do out of the car. Um, so I'm going to grab the other Allen head bolts that were holding us in. That way I can compress this thing out of the car. I already installed the one banjo bolt with the nipple for the side. Um, the other one for the top. Some people install those. It did come with a cap. Um, I'm not quite sure what's best to put on the top. A lot of people don't put anything. So I'll probably just put the banjo bolt in there with something off so it's off to the side so that no dirt or water can get down into the top of that because I'm sure that's not something you want to have happen. So I'm going to grab these other bolts. You do want to make sure that you have this installed before you install the wastegate down in also. All right, here we go. Well, I pretty much have the car to the point where I can do an initial um, start. Um, right now, the only thing that's not in it is coolant because we need a fitting for the turbo, which is quite a few days out. Um, Everything is assembled, uh, the control arms, the axles are in, everything's fine with the transmission, everything's fine with the exhaust. Um, we have oil being fed to the turbo. Uh, the fuel system is back together. Um, we don't have any of the turbo intercooler piping on because it would obviously be in the way when we need to install our lower coolant line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the back door. Um, I gotta hook up the battery. Basically, this is gonna be a test run because like I said, I've had everything apart. Timing belt has been off uh, and replaced. Uh, exhaust manifold's been off and replaced. Intake manifold's been off and replaced. Um, so, you know, we had a lot of stuff apart. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the door, hook up the battery. I have the fuel pump pulled. I'm going to pull the wire off of the coil as another way to make sure it doesn't start. We're going to do some cranking over and try to get some oil pump because we did just change our oil so we got to fill up our oil filter and we want to make sure that we don't start this turbo dry so that's another reason why i'm going to prime the system so i'm going to go open the door we're going to crank this thing over and we're going to get an initial fire here on film <clears throat> There we go. We are good on uh, getting our oil. Um, I'm not seeing anything coming down. So right now I'm going to install my fuel regular uh, the fuel relay, and then I'm just going to cycle the key a couple times, build up some fuel pressure, make sure that I don't have any leaks across my fuel system here that I had apart.
All right, everything's looking good there. Um, let's plug the coil in and uh, double check. All right, our throttle shut. Let's start this thing up. Um, there is some stuff unplugged. The boost, boost solenoids are unplugged. Um, the one temperature sensor uh, is unplugged, along with a couple other items, just so that we could get it. Like I said, it's it's not everything's not assembled, so we'll end up with a check engine light regardless. But this thing should still start and run fine with no issues other than what we know. on some parts um i got something else that i need to pull in here to take care of so i'm going to do that while we're waiting on stuff um, along with making a list and making sure that i have everything else that i need to finish this project but yes that is definitely some greatness right there um yeah i mean why wouldn't it start right up i mean how many of these have i done to, to have a problem so it does sound a whole lot better with this big turbo on it's weird. It makes it like it's a louder, deeper tone. I've noticed when you start strapping the big turbos onto these things, it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. So, um, with that being said, I have another one that I'm gonna be pulling in. Um, that's gonna be for another video. Uh, it's gonna kind of be an update video on something. So I'm gonna get this one off the lift, pull it out, switch out some cores. Um, hopefully this is enough for part two, and you guys can check out part three. Um, like I said, we got fuel system coming and a bunch of other stuff. Thanks for watching, and to the next SRT we go.